one Crowley speaking. Here's Charlie Chaplin, comedy genius of the screen who makes us laugh today just the same as he did our mothers and fathers before us. Number one ingredient of any slapstick comedy is, of course, the good old custard pie. Today we find Charlie working in a baker's shop, so the custard pie should soon be falling thick and heavy. Oh, there goes the first one. Ingredient number two of any slapstick comedy is the fight. And here comes one right now. Now we could have a lot of fun here if we could only find Charlie a chap straw to fall through. Well, well, just what the doctor ordered. I say, operator, do you think we could get a shot in here of Charlie playing around with some dough? Fine, fine, that'll do very nice. Finally, wipe your feet before leaving. Aha! Feminine interest. What's that, fellas? You're not interested? Well, okay, let's get back to Charlie and the other waiter. Good, clean fun, boys and girls. But we must tell you that there's a spot of trouble in the bakehouse. Yes, the bakers have gone on strike for shorter hours and longer loaves, and Charlie and the second waiter are asked to step into the waiter's breeches, if you see what I mean. Charlie gets the job of getting the sack. Careful, Charlie, with that old bag. The flower bag I'm talking about. Good for you, Charlie. You've scored a bullseye. Charlie's just told the other waiter, you're the whitest man I know. Dynamite? Now, whatever's that for? Come up closer and I'll tell you. Even though Charlie and his mates are as white as the driven flower, the bakers who are out on strike accuse them of being blacklegs and they're plotting to blow them all to bakery. Blissfully unaware of their danger, Charlie and the manager liven up the morning with a balancing feat, followed by a few rounds of bread throwing. 
Now then, Charlie, use your loaf. The ladies he meets in the bakery help make Charlie's business a pleasure. And his motto is, if pleasure interferes with business, give up the business. Why doesn't that waiter keep his trap shut? Here comes another tussle between Charlie and the other waiter. This is the only kind of fight where the contestants put real dough on their opponent. Don't look now, but that's one of the chaps who threatened to blow up the bakehouse. Better send for Paul Temple. Meanwhile, life in the bakery goes on just the same as ever. Never mind flirting with the girls, Charlie. Go outside and find what those plotters are up to. Ooh, what's going on here? Stick of dynamite in the loaf, eh? Oh, well, that'll certainly make it rise a little better than yeast. Doesn't anybody know what's going on here? Certainly not Charlie, anyway. He's too busy playing about with the dough and the girls. No wonder the waitresses are getting behind in their work. Good, there goes the waiter to empty the bin. He'll soon put pay to those plotters. Correction, the plotters are put paid to him. Ah, too bad. Now Charlie's going to empty the rubbish. We shall see something now, all right. Well, even Charlie hasn't noticed anything wrong. Maybe he thinks he's, it's just the girls that have given him that day's feeling. Out of the way, girls. It's going to be another fight. One of the plotters tells the little girl to take back the loaded loaf and say, Mother doesn't mind having stale bread, but this is ridiculous. Now I wonder just what is going to happen to that loaf of bread. Careful. Don't drop it. Watch the way Charlie makes donut rings, girls. He should try it sometime.
don't start worrying about how your wife came to have some flour on her, on her, well, you know what. You should be worrying about that loaf filled with dynamite in the oven. Well, the manager wanted Charlie to give him a report, and very soon now I think he's going to get one. A very good one. Now you see what happens when you flirt with the boss's wife, folks. You're bound to find yourself in a sticky mess. So sticky, you'll hardly be able to see daylight. So long, Charlie.